hello hello welcome to tlc tuesday's live chat um let me see let me get this phone just a little bit there we go well isn't that a fun little filter green little sparkles how's it get even better than that so welcome welcome my magical friends i'm thrilled that it is Tuesday and I'm thrilled that you are with me. So much gratitude and I'm thrilled if you catch this at a later time and date. How's it get even better? So today we're going to talk about love and food. We're going to piggyback off of what we talked about last week, um, which was uh, loving your pet to death or something similar to that title. And we're going to leapfrog from there. So hello, hello, who just ever joined me? I missed the little face. Um, and for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Andy Harper. I'm a certified animal chiropractor. Um, I play with consciousness. I play with dogs. Um, I play with changing things and looking at things very differently. So if you like all that stuff, you're in the right place. Hi, Kim. She says hi from frigid Wisconsin. Well, it's gonna get damn frigid here. <laughs> <laughs> over the weekend like below zero overnight which is actually quite unusual for us here in Denver so not looking forward to that um Keisha says hi hi and the sparkles aren't the sparkles cute every week there's new filters in there like I keep going back to find the ones I like and they're gone they're changing them up how's it getting better okay <clears throat> so what we were talking about last week was loving our animals to death. It's a little bit dramatic of a title, but, and so one of the stories that had come up was, well, not really a story, but one of the questions that has come up over my many years of playing with dogs is, you know, you leave the food down there long enough and if they get hungry enough, they'll eat it. A, is that actually true? I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's, and then that's not even really true. I think you can tap into your own knowing and your animals and it may be true for one dog and it may not be true for another dog or it may be true for dogs, but not for cats. And that was the one thing that was brought up on the last chat was, um, somebody had waited for their cat to eat canned food and actually waited and offered canned food for only 10 days and the cat ate none of it. Um, so check in all your points of view about how could she or what's wrong with the cat or all of those points of view that come up in your world. Check in, see what comes up for you. What if nothing's right and nothing's wrong? Um, the cat's still with us, the cat is fine. And how many of us could, could actually go 10 days watching our animals not eat? Because this has been quite the phenomenon that I have been observing for many years. Um, our animals will not be feeling well one morning, right? Maybe there's some vomit, maybe there's a little loose stool. And what do most people do instantaneously is then they try to get food in them. And they don't really want to eat. So we put some stuff on it to entice them. Or we give them their favorite food. Or we give them just treats. Like we have to get food in our animals. What is that all about? And I'm not saying I'm not guilty of this on occasion. <laughs> Although I do tend to sit on the side of the pendulum of, it's okay if they don't eat it for a day. It's okay if you have stuff coming out the front and the back that if you stop putting stuff in, those two things would also dissipate. Stuff is not staying in the body. Stop putting more stuff in the body. Again, kind of go back to what I talk about. Just stop. Just stop, take a breath. And if you have a healthy adult animal, they can miss some meals. And it's been interesting ever since that last chat, what conversations have been coming up with clients. Um, I live outside of Denver, Colorado in the United States my entire life. I have no reference beyond that. I'm gonna admit that right now. And I've been talking to my clients about when's the last time you went hungry? Most people are like, no, why would we do that? Um, so how many of us 
are actually comfortable with our animals being hungry. Yeah, they always get a little pesty, but an hour, two hours before mealtime, like they have that internal clock. We all get that. And that behavior is regular. But how many of us can do a day without feeding our animals? Like some of the raw feeders I know, they take a fast day, they, they don't feed their animals one whole day, a week. The animals don't get to eat. I, 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 I'm gonna say it this way, but I also do think there's nothing right or nothing wrong, but I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't choose to do that because I don't wanna be pestered all day by my animals. <laughs> it's selfish. I give them two meals, they are happy, they are less pesty that way. That's my point of view, that's what works for us. So what works for you and your pack. So I have one client, she switched all of her dogs from two meals to one meal. And it was really funny because they were a little more um, frantic the last time I was over adjusting them. I'm like, what is kind of going on here? She's like, oh, well, they don't get breakfast anymore. So they didn't have a meal, and this was before their dinner. So they were like, oh, do you have cookies? What are we doing here? I'm getting really hungry. Again, what, what has occurred or what do we look at? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of say as Americans that our anim there's such a wrongness in our animals being hungry, our animals missing a meal, like we have to get food in them. Is that our proof of love of them? You are being a good pet parent if you can shovel food in them every single day. And what I think is funny is that when you know people are talking about this or we're having a conversation about it or, or however it comes up, I go, if you are sick, do you feel like eating? And the answer generally is no. So. What do you do? Skip a meal. Eat a lighter meal. Pick out the things that taste pretty good. You know, if, you lose, if your nose is all stuffed up, not everything tastes really good. So you're gonna pick out a few of it, a little bit of it. You're gonna eat your favorite stuff. You might have a cookie when you wouldn't really want to because that will make you feel better. So what if our animals also choose to do some of that too? And this is more just, let's just take a look at it for yourself. Is there something in your universe, in your world, that food equals love? That is your proof of love is food. How many cultures is there a big Sunday meal and the matriarch of the family proves her love by making you know, a huge meal every week, right? That is her proof of love for the family. Like this is throughout cultures and have we taken it now to our animals? Keisha says, my body says hell no to food when she doesn't feel well. Exactly. So I, this is not to say that, oh, you should wait 10 days and see if they eat something. No, most of us are not gonna be able to do 10 days. There's nothing wrong with that 10 days that we talked about. It's just a random number. Don't worry about it. Kitty is fine. <laughs> but most of us are not going to be able to watch our animal not eat for 10 days. Um, but then again, my little Ruby cat wasn't feeling well. She had a little anal gland issue and she, I'm like, okay, I'm, this food's not disappearing, so who's not eating? Which, when you have two cats that are identical, can be a little bit tricky. How does it get even better than that? Um, and then she wasn't hanging out as much. She wasn't on my lap as much. Okay, we're not feeling well. Figure out she has an anal gland issue. We got it resolved. No big deal. And now she's back to eating. But did I? Well, it. It's very different with a cat and a dog, right? When the cat refuses to do something, they they bloody mean they're refusing to do it right there's not there is nothing in their worlds that care if you're happy with what they're choosing 
very different than dogs. You still may have a dog like that on occasion, but most dogs are interested if you are happy with what they are choosing to do. So how many of them will go ahead and choose to eat something they don't particularly care for because you are asking them to do it? To do it. Some dogs will be like, no. Other dogs are like, because you're asking me, I will do it. You also need to keep that energy in mind. So there was not like I could go get Ruby and shove food in her. Like I could go get like my little terrier and shove food in him if I wanted to. Yeah, you know, I'm not choosing that, but you know, I hope that's coming across a little bit. Um, so mostly Grace. Hi, Miss Katie. So I just had to wait for her to quote unquote feel better. And as soon as she felt better, all the food is gone again. Was kind of the point. She wasn't feeling well. She wasn't eating everything that she wanted to eat, that she would normally eat. And what if that was okay for a six-year-old healthy adult animal? That I was also keeping an eye on what was going on with her. So let's go back to your universes. And this is just a question to ask yourself. Acknowledge it. Be aware of it. You can change it or not. But how much do you use food to prove that you love your animal. Okay? A lot, a little, a megaton. A lot of us will probably fall into megaton. I don't, quote unquote, overfeed my animals, but what I choose to feed them would be seen as, I, I, I'm proving I am the best pet parent by feeding this raw food to them, right? It could be that. And actually, when I asked that question, I got a megaton. Okay, cool. Now I can choose to change it or not. That's all, right? It's just when you acknowledge something that's actually true and what's actually going on, then you have choice to change something. That's it. That's all that is. You're not right. You're not wrong. I am not right for feeding a raw diet. It, I'm not. I'm not wrong for it either. It's just a choice that works for me and my animals. And that's it. Most everything is just a choice that works for you and your animals. Now, if something's not working, that's when you ask more questions. And if you find yourself shoveling food into an animal that's not feeling well, and this pops up into your head going, oh, that's right, they could miss a meal, it'd be okay. Just stop, take a breath, keep an eye on them, right? And if they don't want to eat a meal, what if that will actually give their system a break that it requires to heal itself faster? I think every time we go in for ozone session with Dr. Judy Jacek, who is a holistic vet in my area, who has been on my positive podcast, Dr. Andy's World, um, she talks about ozone, she talks about raw feeding. She's a very good friend of mine at this point. I think every time I'm in there, we talk about people just needing to stop and needing to stop having to feed their animals or just wait one more day before they rush off and do something, generally speaking, going to their vet and getting medication. Um, one of her favorites is, oh, my dog had diarrhea. I went to the vet. They gave him um, one of these medications. It stopped. And she always, she goes, I always ask them, well, do you think it would have stopped without the medication if you waited one day? Just stop. One of my big things. And I even have been implementing it more with me, like just stop. Like little Miss Ruby's anal gland issue. I'm like, okay, okay. Where can I take her? Who can see her? What time is it? What day of the week is it? Um, do I want to go in with her? Do you think Dr. JC? All of this went through my head. And then I went, stop. What's required here? And all I got was space. That's what Ruby and I chose to do about it. And one of my other favorite, favorite, favorite things is I am like, okay, girlfriend, we're gonna keep an eye on this, but you're gonna need to handle this, okay? I want you involved in, in getting this result. And I think the next day it was so much better and 
blah, 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 blah. But get your animals involved in their own healing. Get your animals involved in their own healing. Get your animals involved in their own healing, which is what I mean by that is we think we do all the driving, we have all the money, we do have all the thinking, we have the thumbs, right? We need to handle all of this 120%. Okay. You do all of that. Like do everything that you always do and add one more thing for me. Ask your animal that if you to help heal this with you. Give them a job, get them involved. What if that acknowledgement, that question, that involvement is what love equals? And how much more can we do that with our animals? How much more can we acknowledge them? How much more can we get them involved? What if we are not responsible for them? We are in relationship with them. And if you're listening to this, you are the people out there doing all the things already. Okay. Um, you know, you're looking at the different foods. You're looking at the different modalities. You're looking at all this stuff. If you're listening to me for any more than 30 seconds, right? You are those, those pet parents that are looking at all that stuff. So I'm giving you one more tool to or one more superpower. <clears throat> into your into your little toolbox um get them involved in their own healing hello amber good to see you i'm so glad you showed up we already talked about you <laughs> we we ha we're having a little chat up from last week to this week about um food equals love and and all that jazz so i'm glad you made it <laughs> and thank you for that for, for last week Okay, anybody, uh, <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh, great, what about? Oh, your, um, your description of Tia's food strike kind of spurred what we were talking about today, so thank you. <laughs> I like the little happy faces Keisha's sending up. <laughs> All right, my friends, my magical, magical friends, any questions? Anything up in your world that you want to talk about? It doesn't have to be on topic. Whatever is up in your world, um, throw them in the comments below. Um, I guess this is a short one. It's so funny. You think I'd have a lot, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Some are shorter than you think and some are longer than you think. All right, my magical friends. Your animals have any questions? Let's try that a little differently, huh? Why not? Everybody was here and now they're not. <laughs> I like you. See? Aw, oh, thank you, Katie. I love you too. Can't wait for you girls to be home. Been missing you. All right, my magical friends. I guess that's it today. <laughs> Aggie wants to know why it is cold. <laughs> Um, yeah, so does Riggs. We should probably get them together. <laughs> I think, um, if, if Riggs had, my Doberman, if he had a vote, he would like, um, Arizona, Texas, anything? Arizona? <laughs> he pretty much lives in his coat. Um, yes, Katie and Grace will be home soon. I'm so excited. Um, give Aggie a hug from me. And, yes, he is the diva, the Doberman diva. All right, my magical friends. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you for catching me later. Um, invite your friends. Um, and let's talk about how different everything could be. Yay, how much fun. Grace, oh, see, she's my, she's my girl. She's my girl. I can't wait to see Madam President again. You're welcome, Kim. Thank you for being here. All right. Oh, I'll be back next Tuesday, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'll be here. I'll see you then for another TLC. Bye-bye.